I actually was thinking about the very first time I met you. When was it? I'm gonna say somewhere around 10 years ago. Yeah. It was at the Sunset Tower Hotel for the oh. Daily oh. The award, award show. show. Yeah. And you were winning like the the <laughs> basically like goddess in shell <laughs> Venus de Milo. Yeah. Person of the year. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll never forget your speech because you said, my mom taught me mm -hmm. that there will always be other fish in the sea. And if I don't act appropriately, act humble, yeah. act grateful, then not only do I not deserve this, but there's no way to carry on. Yeah. And I was so taken by that. Oh, thank you. No, I mean, I think that it's really important. Um, I'm very grateful for the life that I've come from and both my parents worked really hard to give me that. Um, so I try to be myself and, and try to show, you know, people why I deserve to be there. Can I add to this? Please. If that was 10 years ago, I'm telling you, she still lives it. After five years of knowing her, she's still that person every day. Truly, like, the you, kindest Jessica. person you will meet. In fact, yeah. you two met for the first time. I actually have a snapshot of the story. <laughs> Eva Chen. <laughs> and that's Eva Chen. So um, so I, like the rest of the world, fell in love with um, Tan and that's the nice. Fab Five when Queer Eye came out. And, right? yeah. Yeah. and um, Eva Chen, who I'm friends with, head of Instagram, um, had Tan at her office. And I was like, this is my chance. Like, I saw it on her stories. And like, I'm just going to FaceTime. It was clearly like nine in the morning uh -huh. and uh, like a Saturday. Yeah. And um, we just like hit it yeah. off. And I was like, will you come to my house right now? Yeah. And? And they came over. They came over. So. That's it, right. There was an It's what all of America deserved, but I just got that. I took it. You know what I mean? I ran with it. Listen, go after what you want and need yeah. in the And world. look at me now. I manifested this. That's what you <laughs> know. I know. Never. Never would I have believed that this is how this was going to turn out. It's like, okay, no. we'll be casual friends for a little while and then she'll get over it and she'll never talk and to me again. And then we became best friends yeah. and then, and thank God we like working together. Because it could have gone really bad, right? Yeah. You never know what have kind you, of chemistry. You've probably had friends that like you, you love work. and then you work with them and you're like... Oh, you're not great. I... Name names you know, is what name we're names. Saying. I'm not saying name names. I'm just saying you. Do you? Would you yeah. understand that concept? Could it's funny. Uh, most of my friendships have come from we work together first, first. Oh. and you respect them as yeah. So in that setting first. I don't tend it's to. It's a gamble. Yeah, it really is a gamble. It, it is a gamble a when you buddy up because everyone I'm really good friends yeah. with or so close with their family. Yeah. Like we started working together yeah. and then grew a family from that. So we didn't have. That. It's happened to me the other way. And where, where I've what where did I've, you do? been friends with someone first and then worked with them and I just realized I, yeah it kind of fizzled after that when I saw them how did work. you how do you how does one skirt out of a partnership with a it friend? kind of naturally you, you was phase them out yeah it was like, it was naturally like fading anyways probably for like similar reasons you right know? yeah right? yeah 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 you're like with the writing's on the wall I'll yeah. just yeah. let the invisible ink come apparent because yeah, you can spend two hours with somebody and it's great spend two weeks with them it's horrible spend well, 17 hour days yeah. with them it's rough so you come to her house. What are you talking about with them? Well, it was it was three of us. So it was actually Auntie's birthday. The Fab birth Three. Yes, yeah. it was Auntie's birthday that day, and we were meant to go out for lunch for, for his birthday. And I said, Aunt, look, Gigi Hadid just called, and we had only been in entertainment for three weeks, mm -hmm. so we didn't know anyone. And we're like, Gigi Hadid just called, and she's invited us to her house. I know I'm meant to take you out for your birthday, but do you want to go to Gigi's house instead? He was like, Uh huh. We should. <laughs> We should and definitely now Anthony's do that. one of my best friends and yeah. my neighbor. Yeah. Isn't it amazing to have these gentlemen <laughs> in this world yes. and in this life to help you. us navigate? <laughs> like you and mostly so the nice. Fab Five, so look at so us. Nice. What have you done for us? We're I, human beings so who need to figure out how to live a life. America, and you guys you're have so great advice. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. That's so nice. Thanks and you both that. have children. We do yeah. have babies that are like eight months apart. Mm -hmm. Obsessed. 
obsessed. obsessed. With them. Did obsessed with them. becoming a parent, like everything changed for me. I didn't know how to work anymore. I didn't know how to be myself anymore. So, I didn't know how to be my other self, which mm -hmm. I was like, are there two of me? One is a work person, one's a, the answer is yes. just the person at home. And no, I think they're the same person, but yeah. now my heart is completely uh, focused on kids and parenthood, so I don't feel like I can work the same way, but mm -hmm. I've been on a track my whole life. I don't know how to get off. Yeah. I don't want to get off, but I need to do things differently yeah. because number one priority is now my kids. Not, not yeah. us, yeah. What, how was it for you guys? <laughs> uh, how was it for you? <clears throat> um, I think that it really, I mean, I was pregnant during COVID, which was a, a Interesting, strange. Was but it stressful? Lovely. Because, like, I, I just wonder. Like, I was. There was there was two sides to it. Right. There was like I loved that I was able to really have my pregnancy be private and very peaceful, and um, obviously I got to stop working a lot earlier than I would have if COVID hadn't hit. Um, and but then the other side was like, especially towards the end when like you get in your head like, am I good enough for this? Yeah. And, and like you start to like nest and you're obsessed with like. It would be. It would have been nice to like get out of the house and be with friends and be able to like go to lunch or like yeah. just you know do other things. Or maybe not having the we might all die looming in the. Yeah, that you too. Know, just also, that. like just like don't touch anything. I was a crazy yeah. pregnant. Per like I would go to the grocery store and then everything home on the ground and then from the ground, wipe it down. Yep. Then on the counter. Yeah. But then I think it really kind of made me focus on what would help me feel stable in my work environment. Um, I know that feel you this like way with, this, with this show. Consistency. Yeah. Like you and I have this great ability to be adaptable. You're going to this person place tomorrow. You great. show up on this set, you get to know everyone, you understand how they work, how they want to be like creatively, you know, how they Like this job to me felt like stability. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I feel like- I call it my office job. Yes, yes. My office That's job. Exactly get to yeah. go to the same place every day, see the same people. There's no like yeah. small talk and then we're like, how's your- yeah. And it doesn't go away. Have, yeah. Like, you know, how many kids they have every day, like this, a new group of people. So yeah. this, this is was my, really nice. This was my first job working with Gigi after we had a baby also. So it, it was so humbling, stabilizing, and, and it helped me settle into, oh, you can be a really strong parent, but also be a really strong employee who can have both worlds. Yeah. I didn't want to give up my career. Yeah, and, and, and I didn't want to give up. Do you Being see how eloquent he is? No, he's it's just, amazing. We're all he like, teaches, no, 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 no. <laughs> and he's like, well, so this is it. <laughs> Here's the thing. To I, pause. I, I learned so much about being a parent from G. No, really? Did I not text you a thousand times saying, what would you do in this situation? When oh, yeah, I came to your house, I was like, I can't get my that's baby true. to stop crying. Like, how do we do this? How do I put him down for a nap? And I don't even know what I remember what I say, though. You gave, you gave pretty good advice. Yeah, what did she I say? Said, <laughs> so I was holding him for eight hours a day for his naps. Then Gigi was like, OK, I'm going to give you a tip. This is how you ease out of it. She was like, put him in the stroller. He can still see you and walk around your island in your house and it get him to sleep. Good. Yeah. And then put the island, uh, put the, the stroller there and just kind of Walk, sit next walk, to it. Yeah, <laughs> walk away and sit down. You so you can, he can still see you, and then he'll gradually fall asleep. That advice changed my life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Life. Thank you so much. Yeah. That is <laughs> actually <laughs> great advice. That yeah. is. And we're all trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Now I've seen the first two episodes of the show, yeah. and I am freaking out. First of all, this is one of my favorite shows on television. Right. I love it so much. Thanks. And. Second of all, you are so effervescent. You. you are so cute. So cute. Goofy, sweet, She's excitable. So <laughs> and yeah, it is, is so nice to see you come to life because you are a fully fledged, realized person, which is why everyone gets so fascinated up in your business and <laughs> how you decide. And I've t looked at your journey with your sister. I'm in therapy too, I have been my whole life, mental wellness you know, figuring it all out, a, a boundary. I didn't know what a boundary oh, was. Oh, me either, oh. just, just f figure that out. Well, you know what, I'd like to ago. pull up a picture of you. Um, here is oh. like where you started. So yeah, look at uh -oh. that. Oh. <clears throat> I mean, can you stand it? And I started at 11 months old and I do think oh that God. by job description, the point of what we do is to not have boundaries, to allow yourself to be an open vessel yeah. Um, and so that in itself is very contradictory to what a boundary is. 
How are you doing on boundaries? I'm good with boundaries. I think that um, once I worked in, in therapy to realize that you can be assertive and as long as you're polite, that doesn't make you ungrateful or rude, mm -hmm. obviously. So I think that once that clicked for me, now it seems obvious, but I just started to, um, I just started to say what I, what I thought more. And as long as I, like I said, was polite and, um, you know, still respectful, then you can say how you feel.